In front of me are two pairs of vases, both produced in China and both examples of green glazed ceramic known as celadon ware. They were made in Longquan in southern China. This first pair was made in the 13th century during the Sun Dynasty and this second pair during the 14th century and the Yuan Dynasty. Now while there are some similarities in origin, in colour and perhaps in function, there are also some differences between them in size, shape and decoration. These differences help to shed light on some of the political, economic and cultural changes which took place in China in the 13th century as a result of the Mongol invasions. In 1279, Kublai Khan, grandson of the notorious Chinggis Khan, completed his conquest of China, unifying North and South for the first time in 300 years. This was the culmination of half a century of Mongol expansion, which had seen their empire grow and stretch from the Mediterranean Sea all the way to the Pacific coast, encompassing the former empires of the Abbasid Caliphs, the Persians, and the Kievan Rus. Now, whereas the Mongols chose to use their Western territories more as vassal states, they had greater ambitions for China, which they sought to make the center of their new empire. In 1272, Kublai Khan established a new capital there, Khan Balik, now Beijing, and he adopted a Chinese imperial title, Yuan, meaning origin of the universe, a phrase he'd appropriated from the classic Confucian text, the I Ching. Economically, China also became more closely integrated into the vast trading network of the Silk Road. And this combination of political and economic stability saw a flowering of trade and culture, both within China and throughout the wider Eurasian steppe. Evidence of this can be seen in our two pairs of vases produced in the 13th and 14th centuries. This first pair was produced in the early 13th century, before the Mongol invasions, during the Southern Sung Dynasty. They're simple yet elegant in form and undecorated. They were probably produced for a wealthy domestic clientele. They were likely to have been decorative pieces, as perhaps was this rather delicate bowl, also celadon ware from the Sung Dynasty with its stunning blue-green glaze and decoration of lotus leaves. In contrast, this second pair was made about 100 years later during the Yuan Dynasty. They're slightly larger, of heavier construction, and made in a slightly different way. China's integration into the Mongol Empire had opened up new overseas trade routes, and this led to a rapid expansion of the pottery industry and new ways of manufacturing ceramics. In this case, the decoration on these vases was created using moulds, and you can see the seam running around the edge of them. Larger pieces like this incense burner were also produced for the export market, and many examples of these kinds of Yuan Dynasty ceramics have been found throughout Southeast Asia and the Middle East. The second difference is that these pieces are clearly more highly decorated than their Sung Dynasty counterparts. Look at the handles of this vase, which have been shaped as elephant's heads, and the complex floral motif winding around the Chinese characters for happiness and long life. This more elaborate decoration was influenced by the tastes of the Persian and Arab merchants who carried much of this overseas trade. Islamic art prized intricate geometric and floral designs, and the customers back home would have expected this of their luxury imported goods. Furthermore, the shapes of Chinese ceramics were often inspired by metal vessels of Islamic design imported from the Middle East, yet further evidence of the strong trading network created by the Yuan Dynasty. But perhaps the most significant development in Chinese ceramics in this period was the result of another import from the Middle East, cobalt. This bright blue mineral imported from Kashan in Persia where it was often used to decorate earthenware, allowed for new and striking decorative designs. This small bowl, probably used for pouring wine, 
is one of the earliest examples of blue and white porcelain. As well as being the product of a technological innovation, this combination of colours also had a religious significance for the Mongols, whose Hunnic ancestors were said to be the hazy blue wolf and the white fallow doe. As a result, it led to their increasing popularity during the Yuan Dynasty. And while Celadon ware continued to be produced in China until the 16th century, blue and white became the most common form of decoration for Chinese ceramics for centuries to come. So these ceramics show how politics, trade, technology and religion can combine to bring about artistic and cultural change, in this case as a result of the Mongol invasions of the 13th century.